One of my favorite things about games is the concept of a playstyle. Being able to be individual and make your mark on a game depending on how you play it and what choices you make is one of the coolest things in the world. Like, I could play a buddy in Civ 5 and think to myself, wow, they're really holed up in there. Korea really suits their playstyle if they want to just turtle up and keep to themselves. Or I can play a total random in Rivals of Ether and instantly think to myself, okay, wow, this person is pretty impatient. Uh, they're approaching me constantly and they always spam their kill moves once I'm at a high percentage. Uh, I think I've kind of got a read on this dude. Or I can play a Yasuo player in League and think to myself, wow, this person is a total piece of shit. However, when it comes to playing competitive Pokemon, the concept of a playstyle is something that I don't think exists to the same extent. So much of playing Pokemon boils down to making the correct play at the correct time that while playstyles do definitely exist and there is individuality to be found especially in team building that it sometimes doesn't feel as unique as playing something like a fighting game now as you probably predicted from my thumbnail this is why i've been so in love with the monotype format on showdown recently monotype is a unique metagame on pokemon showdown with its own ladder where every single player is like its own gym leader you get to pick one typing like grass or psychic or ghost and you have to build an entire team using only that one type for example on a water team i might take a look at the available pokemon and say shit there's a lot of strong water types available here but with pelipper and politoed on the team i can make a hell of a rain team out of this or you might say okay mono poison huh might seem bad but now that i look at it I can see that I have access to three amazing Regenerator users in Sloking Galar, Toxapex, and Amoongus. Throw Toxic Spikes and maybe even Salazzle in that mix, and I can make a nasty stall team here. As you can see, this tier is really fun because not only do you get to easily theme your whole team around a team concept, like Grassy Glide Spam for grass teams, or maybe abusing gravity for mono ground teams, but it also forces you to build around your weak matchups. For example, if I decide I'm going to be the sickest ghost type trainer to ever hit the ladder, that's all well and good, but I'm really going to need something to help me out with all the defensive dark types that I could run into. So maybe I add a Mimikyu that can use its fairy typing to hit the dark type Pokemon super effectively. Or maybe even I run a dynamic punch Golurk to help me out against the normal types as well as the dark types, things like that. Or to bring up another example, if I'm playing Mono Grass, which is actually one of my personal favorites, I can look at the typing honestly and say, okay, well, it looks like my team has big weaknesses to fire, ice, poison, and flying. What am I gonna do? Uh, you know what? I never would use it on another team, but here on Mono Grass, a Cradilly looks amazing. Its extra rock typing gives me resistances to all four of those weaknesses, plus it's a stealth rocker with access to good recovery and bulk. It looks like a great defensive staple for me for now. Now there's no way that Volcarona can sweep me. It's impossible! Oh. <clears throat> but fun team building challenges like this are a huge component of monotype. The push and pull of covering your type's weaknesses versus leaning into your strengths is one of the trickiest challenges in monotype, but it's also extremely rewarding. Unfortunately though, I will say there's a lot of people on the monotype ladder who start up a match, see they have a bad matchup, and then immediately forfeit. Not only is this dumb as hell, like are you seriously going to play mono bug and auto forfeit against all 20 of your bad matchups, but it's also doing yourself a massive disservice. Because going into a game where your type is at a disadvantage versus your opponent, and then finding a path to victory regardless, is one of the most satisfying experiences in all of Pokemon. For example, I was playing some mono type on stream a little while ago using a mono ice type team, and my opponent ladders up with a mono water rain team. Now my first thought upon seeing this is that I'm at a bit of a disadvantage. Not only do water type Pokemon resist my ice type moves, but the enemy Pelipper can deny my my Ninetales hail setting with its own drizzle ability. Not to mention some of those rain sweepers are terrifying and just about nobody on my entire team can swap into a bandit bear scoot as close combat attack safely. But what am I going to do? Forfeit? I knew I was in for a rough time when I load up an ice team. So let's roll up the sleeves here and let's get to work. So I look at the matchup and I think to myself, well, as much as I'd like to keep up hail, my opponent's team is even more weather dependent than I am, if I'm being honest. They're really going to want to keep their Pelipper safe so that their rain abusers can pop off. So I highlight my Ninetales as really important so I can deny the weather whenever I need to. And then when I look at the opponent's team, I can realize that outside of rain, their team really isn't that fast, actually. So I highlight my Ninetales as doubly important with its base 109 speed. And I also highlight my Scarf Dar Manitan as a great sweeping option in a possible late game. Finally, although my opponent resists ice type attacks, I do have two Pokemon with the move Freeze Dry, which is a special property that makes it super effective against water type Pokemon. So it's perfect in the situation. As a result, I also note that my Curum is going to be huge here. And what do you know? My Ninetales Alola also has it. So I now mark that Ninetales Alola as triply important it's an essential part of this matchup so my frailest pokemon is also my most important great this should be easy nothing like having my suicide mon as my most important pokemon here great 
But hey, then I get to work, I abuse these matchup notes I made, I outplay my opponent a little bit, and let me tell you, when I come away from this game with a win 30 teams later, it is a sweet, sweet feeling. I mentioned this anecdote for a couple of reasons. One, if you do end up giving Monotype a shot, I don't want you to be one of those players that just automatically insta forfeits their bad matchups and deprive themselves and their opponents of a fun game. That's ridiculous in my opinion. Secondly, I know there's a lot of people out there who like to bring low tier Pokemon to overuse games because they enjoy the challenge or whatever you want to call it, a beating OU Pokemon with a weaker team. Well, if that weird description fits you somehow, then you're going to love all the disadvantaged matchups to be found in Monotype. Fighting through a bad matchup into a win, I will admit, is a very satisfying feeling. It's the ultimate confirmation of your team's ability. Finally, and most importantly, the whole reason I bring this up is I mentioned that story because it's a good way to talk about one of the most common questions regarding Monotype, which is what type of team should I be playing? It's a fair question because learning the ins and outs of a team is important. And if you want to improve, switching back and forth between different types of teams can really slow you down. So sticking with one good one is a good method to go with. And for my answer, I'm going to say that you should pick the type that you like the most. It's a bit of a cliche, but at least hear me out. While it's true that some types are just fundamentally very, very good at mono type like mono water or steel teams or whatever, that can actually be used to your advantage. So mono grass, probably not the greatest type you might think, right? As an attacking type, it's only super effective versus three typings, but it's resisted by a whopping seven. Well, maybe that's true, but you also need to consider the representation of those types and how popular ground and water type teams are on the ladder. While mono water is objectively very good, it's true. It's also extremely overrepresented. I'm pulling these numbers completely in my ass, to be honest, but let's say I run into a water team, let's say 15% of the time, right? And I run into bug, fire, and flying type teams a total of 10% of the time. In that case, I am still coming out on top in this example, right? This is why it's really not as simple as being good or being bad, because there's always going to be bad matchups, and you can play into that oversaturation quite a bit. And to take that a step further, the monotype forums actually refuse to publish any rankings of the different types for a reason. Newcomers are too quick to pick a top tier typing instead of just picking who they would think would be fun and then running with it. Trust me when I say that you can make absolutely any typing work in monotype. Just a little while ago, I had that stream I mentioned where I played Mono Ice for the entire stream. And you know, I've already gone on record on why I think that Ice is a pretty brutal typing objectively, but after a while, once I learned the ins and outs of the Ice playstyle, what Pokemon to feature and what matchups, that sort of things, how to leverage my Darmanitan Galar, for example, because I should also mention at this point that the ban list for overuse and Monotype is different. So you can use Pokemon like Spectreer and Darmanitan Galar, and in some cases are Shifu. I'm not sure if that one's a ban, but anyways. So once I learned the ins and outs of the matchups, I ended up having a great deal of success, and I actually of such a successful time with it that I matched the elo of my main account in just a couple of hours. As I said, learning how these teams work is a blast. This process of learning the ins and outs of a playstyle of each typing is so much fun because each have their own personality and quirks that you really need to adjust to. Much like if I'm learning a technical, aggressive, in-your-face fox and melee or a pound the rock, conservative, run first team in Madden. So all this is to say that if you're looking for a fun, new, competitive type of Pokemon meta to get into with a very active community to boot, I would really recommend you give Monotype a shot. Smogum forum for the page is so active that you can get a sample team for literally every typing quite easily and hit the ground running if you want to. Or build your own team and learn the unique challenges of building around a type's weak matchups. It's one of the most popular formats in Showdown 2, so you're not going to have much trouble finding games or people to talk to about it. And I also mention this in case you're a beginner, and maybe you're a bit intimidated by the overused here as a place to get going on Showdown. Because things can be pretty streamlined in Monotype, and I found that the learning curve is a little bit easier than some other formats. Definitely not an easy metagame to master by any means, but I also find it's easy not to get discouraged by losses in this format either. For example, if I'm playing Mono Steel and I run into a Mono Fire team, like, okay, fine, you got me. I lose this one, probably. Like I mentioned, I'm of course going to play it out and do my best to overcome the disadvantage and win, but if I do lose, then that's a really, really easy L for me to hold. There's no way I'm going to beat myself up for losing this situation. But yeah, on the topic of how fun the monitor format is, I'm thinking I'm actually going to start uploading some showdown lives with this format on YouTube. I did something similar with the AAA tier, got a lot of great reception, which is wonderful, but if I'm being honest, monotype is the tier that I'm most interested in right now. I've been playing it a lot on stream, obviously, but even just in my own personal time. So I'm excited to get to play the tier, use different typings, maybe give a bit of an example of how to play it. So you want to learn how to do mono fire. Maybe I'll have a live up, but you can watch the mono fire live, things like that. I just figured that I want to show how cool this tier is. That's the best way to do it firsthand, you know? But thanks so much for watching and be sure to let me know if you enjoyed this sort of video, kind of breaking down a metagame because I'm tempted to start making similar videos for formats like Little Cup or Black and White Overuse and things like that. So let me know what you think about it. But uh, that's me done. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Thank you